In this video, we're going to learn how to encrypt and decrypt string data using PHP. Encrypting data protects sensitive information when storing it. We'll see how to use three popular techniques for encrypting data in PHP. OpenSSL, Sodium, and the PHP encryption package. We'll start with OpenSSL. This is part of Core PHP, and it's highly likely that it's already installed. It's widely adopted and actively supported. Let's write some code. To use OpenSSL, first we need to decide on an encryption algorithm, also referred to as a cipher method. OpenSSL supports various different algorithms. We can get a list using the OpenSSL get cipher methods function. This returns a list of the available algorithms, which, as you can see, is quite long. There's a discussion here, which goes into more detail about these, and there's a link to this in the description if you're interested. However, a good choice is AES-256-CBC, so we'll go with that. Note that this string identifier isn't case-sensitive. Next, we need an encryption key. This is a random string of characters that's used by the encryption algorithm to encrypt the data. Instead of generating one yourself, there are websites that will do it for you. For example, let's use this one, copy this value, and paste it as the value of the key variable. Note that this value is the same for all encryption operations, so you only need to generate this once. However, it does need to be kept secret. So instead of it being hard-coded in here like this, you typically store this value in a configuration file like a .end file. I'll keep this simple and leave it in here, but there's a link in the description to my video on best practices for storing configuration settings. Next, we need a value called an initialization vector. This is a random value used to make sure the encrypted output is unique. This makes the encryption more secure by making it more difficult to crack. Unlike the key, this value needs to be generated for each encryption operation, so you need to store this along with the encrypted value as it's needed for decryption. The simplest way to come up with a value for this is to generate it, based on the algorithm we're using. The length of this value is significant, so first we'll use the OpenSSL cipher IV length function, passing in the algorithm we're using. This will give us the number of bytes the IV needs to be for this algorithm. Then we can use the OpenSSL random pseudobytes function, passing in this value, to get a random sequence of bytes of that length. Note that this is a sequence of bytes, not a printable string. So if you want to save this to a database, use a binary type field. Next, let's define a variable that sets some options. If we set this to the constant OpenSSL raw data, then the encrypted text will be a string of bytes. Instead, let's set it to zero, which means the encrypted text will be a base64 encoded string. Now we can encrypt some string data. To keep it simple, I'm going to run this PHP code by running it on the command line, but you can easily adapt this code to run as part of a web application. So let's use the readLine function to get the text we want to encrypt, known as the plain text. Then, to encrypt this string, we use the OpenSSL encrypt function, passing in the plain text, the cipher method, the encryption key, the options, and the initialization vector. The encrypted string is known as the cipher text. Then let's output the original string, followed by a line break, then the cipher text, again followed by a new line character. To decrypt the cipher text, we call the OpenSSL decrypt function, passing in the cipher text, followed by the same arguments we passed in above. Finally, let's output this value. This should be the same as the original string. Let's give this a try, running it on the command line. If I enter a string and press enter, the output is the original string, the encrypted string, which looks like a sequence of random characters, and then the original string back again at the end. Note how we need the same values for the decryption to get back to the original string the algorithm, key, options, and IV. So, with OpenSSL, in addition to storing the encrypted ciphertext, you need to store the IV value along with it. 
The encryption key, however, you only need to store once, and you typically store this in a separate configuration file. Next, let's have a look at how we use the Sodium library to encrypt some data. Again, this is part of Core PHP, but you might need to install or enable it. This package was designed to be simpler to use than OpenSSL, as you don't need to decide on which algorithm to use. As with OpenSSL, we need a value for the key. Although the library does contain methods to generate a key, which you could then save, again we'll keep it simple and just hardcode a random value. This does need to be a specific length, but typically it's 32 characters, and you'll get a warning if it's the wrong length. Then we need a unique value, just like the IV we generated for OpenSSL. For this library, however, it's referred to as a nonce, short for a number used just once. We can generate this using the random bytes function, passing in the sodium crypto secret box nonce bytes constant to get the correct number of bytes. As with OpenSSL, this is a byte string and needs to be stored along with the ciphertext. If you're storing it in a database like MySQL, it needs to be a binary type field and not a text field. Now we can get the text we want to encrypt again using the readLine function. To encrypt this, we call the sodium crypto secret box function, passing in the plain text, the nonce, and the key. Let's output the original string, then the encrypted string. To decrypt the ciphertext, we call the sodium crypto secret box open function, passing in the ciphertext, the nonce, and the key. Note that this function returns false if the decryption fails, so you can check for that if you need to. Finally, let's print out the decrypted string. Let's run that on the command line. If I enter a string and press enter, we get the encrypted data and the original decoded string. Note that the ciphertext is a sequence of bytes, not a sequence of printable characters. If you want to be able to display the ciphertext, or store it in a regular text field, you can use the bin2hex function to convert it to a string of hexadecimal characters. Now when we run this, we get the hexadecimal version of the ciphertext as well. If you're just storing it, you can use a binary field in the database with no problems. As with OpenSSL, in addition to storing the ciphertext, you need to store each nonce value. The key can be stored in a configuration file. Finally, let's look at the PHP encryption package. This uses OpenSSL internally, but is much easier to use than both OpenSSL and Sodium. First, let's install the package from the command line using Composer. This installs the package to the vendor folder. To use this package, let's autoload the package's class files by requiring Composer's autoloader. Before that, let's add a couple of use statements to import some classes from that package into the current namespace. As with OpenSSL and Sodium, this package requires an encryption key. The package comes with a utility program to generate a new key. So back on the command line, let's run it. Let's copy this value, and in the code, create a variable containing this value. We'll call the variable key ASCII, because next we'll create a key object that contains this value, using the static load from ASCII safe string method of the package's key class. Then, as with the other methods, let's get the plain text from the console input. To encrypt a value using this package, we simply call the static encrypt method on the crypto class, passing in the plain text and the key object. Let's output the original and encrypted strings. To decrypt an encrypted value, we simply call the decrypt method. This method throws an exception if there's a problem, so you can wrap this in a try-catch block to handle that. Finally, let's output the decrypted string. Let's run this, and we get the encrypted string printed out, along with the original string after it's been decrypted. Note how the encrypted string is a string of printable characters, so you can store it or send it as regular text. 
Note also that the encrypted string is much longer than the plain text value, so you might need to take this into account. Unlike the other two methods, there is no IV or nonce value to store. You only have to store the ciphertext. The key, however, can be stored in a configuration file. As there are no additional values to store, using this package is the simplest and has the most readable code. Note that if you're using a framework like Laravel, for example, then this might include an encryption library that makes it even simpler to encrypt data. Note that none of these techniques should be used to store credit card numbers. If you're working with credit card data, consider using a third-party service like Stripe. There's a link to all the source code shown in this video in the description, along with links to sites shown and relevant documentation. Please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, and as always, thank you for watching.